Now we just want to go through a relatively advanced example of data transformations and what you can actually do and a relevant example of, of what you can achieve if uh, if you just think um, if you just expand your mind in, in terms of thinking about the possibilities around uh, what what data is actually sitting out there and combining it with some of your internal data so in this example uh, I'm going to show you how you can find data from a website that is relevant to the data model that we have here so if we look at our location uh, data here, you'll see that everything's in California. So we're analyzing uh, data in California. And so in terms of how, if we wanna see how our sales were going in California, we may wanna compare that to the population in each of these counties. And then we can see, well, per head of population, how are, how are our sales going? Are they going better in some uh, counties per, uh, per, per population versus other? other counties because sometimes obviously your results can be skewed uh, depending on how large the population is but we might actually be uh, getting far better uh, penetration into a particular market and so the only way we can actually understand that is if we have the population statistics now you'll see here that the population uh, statistics are actually already here because in the in the demo data set that uh, I've included them but in this example, I'm actually going to delete it. I'm going to show you how you can actually find this data uh, by, by, by yourself. And so, for instance, if you had different regions or uh, different areas around the world, uh, you, you may be able to find similar information, and this is how you actually match them up. So we've already got a, we've got a pretty detailed uh, uh, location table in here already, but now we need to go find the population information. We want to see per county how many people actually live in this particular county. So I found a website, this one here, california-demographics.com, and I was able to see what the populations were by county. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go query this information. I'm going to bring it into our, my Power BI model. So I'm going to copy and paste the web link, and then I'm going to find the uh, web query, and then all I have to do is copy and paste that link into uh, the input box here, and then go OK. This is then gonna bring up a navigator screen where we can actually preview the table that we wanna bring in. So if I go table zero, you'll see here that the preview is that table in that website. So this is the, it's, 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 it's looking through to this website and finding that table. And then if I go okay, that's now gonna run a query and it's actually gonna bring this table into, into, into our, our, que our query editor. And so I'm just gonna name it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this uh, color. California uh, data. Okay, so now if we look at this table, now just a, a point of note here, whenever you bring in data from a website, uh, it is it is a hundred percent never how you want the data to be. So you're gonna have to make some sort of transformation. And in this case, we don't need this rank row, obviously, because that's that doesn't mean anything to us at the moment. Uh, we can we can actually calculate ranking. Uh, internally via DAX if we really wanted to. Uh, now, uh, these three uh, rows down the bottom here, obviously we, we don't need these rows. They're, they're nothing rows to us. So uh, you know, there's no information that we would want to bring into our location table. So these are the, these are the changes I'd make. I'd, I'd delete this column. I don't need that column anymore. And then I'm going to go make sure we filter out those, co those, those columns we also don't need, uh, those rows, sorry. So this row, we don't need that. And then those other ones look like they've already filtered out. And so now we actually have a table. We have a table of just the population per county, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we need to somehow get this table or that or those the, the this data into our location table. We need it as a column in our location table. And what's what we have here is we actually have the county column here, so we can actually join these two tables up. And I would recommend doing this because you don't need an additional table for this information if you can just bring it into one. So the way we do this is we want to merge these queries. So to merge queries, first of all, select on the table you want to merge uh, the um, new query to. So I'm going to select location, and then I'm going to select merge queries up here. I'm going to make sure we, we merge it on county and I'm going to find my California data. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to 
do an inner, we're gonna do an inner join. So it's gonna find all of the counties that exist in our location table and match them up to all of the counties which exist in our new table that we've queried. Okay, so let's now, oh, first of all, we have to make sure we select uh, the, the county column like so. So it's gonna so it's gonna link up this county column versus this county column. And you'll see here that it actually gives you a preview and it says, well, there's 74, there's mat, they all match. So we're gonna get population data for every single column there. And so I'm gonna go okay. And then you'll see now that this has populated into uh, into our location table. Now these two arrows up here, we just need to select those. And then we can actually select which, uh, which information we want to bring into this table. I'm gonna have them all at the moment just for demonstration purposes. And there you go. So we have now brought in that query into this table. And we know that they match because if you look at this county column, say Orange County is matching to Orange County, LA County is matching to LA County, and so on and so forth. So we've now we've now combined these two queries. So we would do a bit more to finish this off. We would remove this column, we don't need it, and then we might want to call this population, population stats. Something like so. So now we have per county the information uh, on uh, our population. So we could then pull in this information. We could pull this information into uh, into our uh, into our into our calculations. We could use use these these in our calculations to run um, you know uh, analysis on our sales, making sure that we are, are getting the right um, you know right sales or we're getting good sales within uh, within particular areas, within particular regions of our data set. Now that we've added that data into our location table, we can also uh, move this, this query up into our staging queries and disable the load because we don't need to load this table anymore into our model because we actually have the data now inside our location uh, table. Let's now go through another advanced example. This one actually has far more transformations, but it will it will it will sit within a an existing. Uh, it will sit within its own own table. So in a lot of cases, especially in in the finance area, you may need to find out what the exchange rates are. And so I'm just going to navigate to this website here. I'm based in New Zealand, so. Uh, our founded table of exchange rate uh, data, which is based in New Zealand uh, from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. And so I'm gonna try and reference this table and I'm gonna show you all the transformations that you need to make to actually get this into an optimized shape for Power BI. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy, copy this, this web link. I'm going to then uh, go to the web query, I'm gonna paste in the link like so. And then I'm gonna find which table actually has my uh, the uh, uh, the preview in it. And we'll, you can see here that this table zero does. So I'm just gonna select that and go okay. And I'll just X out of that. And now we have this exchange rate table. So it's it's got a lot of information in it. But this is in a really suboptimal sub shape for Power BI. So we need to do a number of different transformations. And you'll see by me working away in these transformations how much you can actually do uh, with this transformation uh, engine. And then also what the end result should you should be aiming for when you're making these big transformations. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to filter out some of the information that's just, which is irrelevant. So. This, uh, these top three rows, I, I, we don't even need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, get rid of these. I'm gonna go uh, get rid of, get, filter out those three columns, which is great. And then, uh, and then we need to then get this, these dates, we need to get these dates uh, on a column instead of a header. You'll, you'll find this quite often that dates end up being uh, on as column headers. But in Power BI, you want these to be in just one column. Now, the way you actually do that is you unpivot columns. 
So in this case, I'm gonna select the column I don't, uh, that is, is okay as is, and I'm going to unpivot it like so. And then you get information, then you get your, 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 um, your date, your, all your dates in one column. What we'll do first actually though, is we will transpose uh, these date headers with these columns down the side here, because we wanna actually change, we wanna be able to change the names of each of these exchange rates. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna get these dates down into a column and I wanna push the, this column up into the header. Now the first thing we've gotta do is we've actually got to you make make these headers our first row because we can't transpose anything anything which is in the header. So I'm going to um, use this selection here, use headers as first row, and then that's gonna bring down our dates. And then I'm gonna transpose the information so that our dates then are down on the left-hand side and our, our currency our headers are up the top. And then I'm gonna do use first row as header and I'm gonna push this up to the header. Then I'm gonna make some changes to my column names. And so I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna change this to uh, KiwiUSD. I'm gonna do the same here. Like so. And so we're just formatting things so that they're intuitive for us to then work on post, uh, once we actually uh, commit this to our data model. And the last one here, I just need to actually go like this. Okay, so now we have now we have all of our currencies all nicely laid out like so in a, in a pivot shape. The last thing, the other thing we need to do is we need to actually, this is actually, this. if you look at this data type up here, it doesn't know that this is actually a date. So we need to turn this into a date. And so the way we do that is we go up into the date icon and if we pass this, it will actually physically turn this into a date and you'll see that the data type actually changes like so. Now we come to a point where we actually, again, we want to get well, we want to get these column headers, we actually want to get them into one column because we want to exchange all our exchange rate information to be in one column. Always try and think long and thin when you have this sort of information. In Power BI, you, you, you want your data to always be unpivoted. If you, look at, if you look at this sort of shape, this is a pivoted shape. And so another way to think about it is long and thin. So if you have a pivoted data table with similar values so that these would be i would cl uh, class all of these exchange rate values if they're in it's some pivoted shape like this you want to try get them into one column and so the way to do that is to use unpivot other columns by selecting the dates column and then you get them in this long thin table like so and all your exchange rates are in one uh, in the one column and so we could we could call this exchange rates and we could um, currency pair, call that currency pair. And then we could also break this out again. So I'm going to, I'm actually gonna duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate this column. Then I'm gonna split the column by three, as far left as possible. Then I'm gonna delete this column. And I can change this to foreign currency and then I can change the order of it like so. So we've done a massive transformation. I hope, hopefully you can see, if you look down the right-hand side of the applied steps, look at all these changes that we've made. But now this is an optimized shape table for Power BI. We could then say, name it. We could call this exchange rate, exchange rate data. And we could actually push this into our data model. And then if we could commit this, uh, we, we could actually commit this table now to our model and utilize it in our calculations. We could use, we could use this in combination with information from our sales table uh, and our, or you know, think about your invoice table or, 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 your, or your, uh, uh, your delivery table. So range of, different, um, range of different ways that you could use tables like this or, or structured somewhat like this. Now, there's a few other changes we want to make as well. Obviously, we want to make sure that the data types are correct. So uh, we can change that up here. So this is a fixed decimal. 
But really, we're, we're all done here. We've done a number of different transformations. You can actually look back and see what you've done. So we can actually go back to the start and click through every single transformation that we did and see how much we transformed um, this particular data table. And then, now, if that link does not change inside the website as well, if you refresh the data, it sh all of these all, it should go and requery the that table. All of the transformations are automated, and it should just flow into your data in, into your data set. <clears throat> the other thing that I've just noticed is that uh, oh no, that's right. So all of the column names are correct, and that's uh, that's all looking fine. So this is just an example. This is just an advanced example of what you can achieve with the, the query editor. Uh, it, may, it may not be exactly relevant to every single uh, you know, example that you work in, but uh, it just shows you the power of the query editor.